Bonjour mon petit chiffre, Amber here and we are winding down to the end of the year and I am now sitting down priming all of my end of the year videos <laughs> into like two days. This is the time of the year where we're all telling you our favorites of the year, our least favorites of the year, what we plan on reading next year. Right now, today, I am going to sit down and spill a little tea, not really. I'm just going to sit down and tell you a few of the books that I didn't love this year. I think usually I'll just say like the worst books of the year, but I think I could just call it like my most disappointing reads of the year because they weren't. I didn't hate all of them. I was just disappointed with most of them or found them forgettable. So I, I'm just gonna talk through them a little bit. I keep, if you're wondering what I'm looking down at, I have my little list right here. I only have a few. I had, for the most part, I enjoyed most, I enjoyed most of the books that I read this year. But there were a few that did not tickle my fancy. I'm going to go up the list from just vaguely disappointing, just fine to why are you like this? The first book on this list is the first book that I read this year actually and it's The 48 by Donna Hosey. I read this back in January obviously I just said it was the first book I read this year. I read this right before I went off to Europe for a bit. I miss it so much this is why I keep bringing it up. The 48 is about it follows these twin time traveling assassins basically they are part of this this program that kind of jumps through history and alters the course to better the future I think it's supposed to be. They are sent back to Tudor England to stop the the marriage of King Henry VIII to Jane Se Seymour. I think they're meant to kill her. A lot ensues yada yada yada. I wanted to love this book so much time traveling assassins i love historical fiction i love the tudor i love books based set in the tudor era books and shows i thought it had a lot of potential and this is the this is one that was definitely just like fine for me i i think i gave it like two and a half three out of five stars i just wanted more from the book when i picked the book up it was just kind of like a whim this was like all the way up my alley i just it had a lot of potential i did will say i did like the twins as main characters i liked their relationship i liked how close they were i like that even though these were they were like these trained assassins they were like the soft boys they just loved each other so much and it was really cute i liked the character of alice i think she was a voice of reason then there was the character of margaret who felt really pointless to me. Her storyline just seemed all over the place and unnecessary and like I said in my review I really would have preferred it if the third POV in the book would have been of Alice. Even though I'd like the characters a lot of the plot seems really all over the place. The whole premise of the 48 in there which is like the organization and their mission is really confusing and a lot was left open like a lot of ends were left untied. There's not enough backstory or history given about the institution or the people in charge. And I also felt like there were a lot of points in the story that just felt like really disjointed. Just like a bunch of things were happening at the same time. And then there were also a lot of points that just felt like filler. And like I said in the review, the closer we got to the end of the book, <laughs> the more it just felt like we were floating through the stories of it says, as if the author forgot the main focus of the story and needed to pad the story before the conclusion. Also, apparently, I, I assume the book is a, cl uh, a standalone, but the ending was not good. I think it wanted to be a cliffhanger, but it was just too messy. It was just messy and just wasn't like a satisfying cliffhanger. Anyway, the book had a lot of potential. I've been talking about it way too long, a lot longer than I wanted to let's move on. I said I put this at the bottom of the list because I'm like oh it was just it was fine but I just feel like I got really angry. So the next book on this list I also read in January right after this book actually and it was A Study in Charlotte by Brittany Cavallaro. This book is it follows the two main characters Jamie and Jamie is that his name? 
Jamie and Charlotte who are descendants of Watson and Sherlock Holmes and they end up going to school together and um I think everyone just like expects them to be friends and then there is a murder on the campus of the school and they become suspects in the murder and the story follows them basically working together to solve the crime and prove their innocence and like becoming friends and blah 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 and people love this book but I don't know if it was because I was really sick at the time that I was reading it while I was in Europe. I was reading this I think I started reading it in Amsterdam and then I finished it when did I finish it right before we left for left to come home from Manchester so I think part of it might have been because I was sick that I just couldn't get with the book couldn't vibe with the book could get into it Jamie I didn't really care I didn't care about either character in this book I feel like another once again I feel like the plot had a lot of uh, the premise had a lot of potential and plot just didn't do it for me. I feel like I did enjoy the mystery aspects of it. I just didn't care about the characters. I feel like Jamie was a creep. I feel like Charlotte was a cliche, very contrived. And I just, I didn't see a lot of what people see in the book. I do, because I'm kind of comprising a list of books I want to unhaul. But I, and I, for a second I thought about putting it on the list. But I do think I want to reread it and give it another shot now that like I'm not sick and away from home. Because I kind of think of it sort of how when I first read Stalking Jack the Ripper I kind of felt the same. I had similar feelings to that book and as we know I reread the book and I've since finished the series and I've I really sort of like I can't, I was able to enjoy the series and I feel like it definitely got better and I, at the end of the day I am really glad that I gave it a second chance so I think I might give this book a second chance and try to see what I missed the first time and try to see if I want to continue on with the series. Okay so this next book is really on this list because I completely forgot that I read it this year. And to be fair, I did read it in a time where I was like in a really weird headspace. I remember like that, that when I read this book, I think I only read one, two books maybe that month. It took me like three months to read this book. So I didn't review it. I didn't give it a star rating or anything. I don't really remember reading this book at all. I just, I know I did, but I don't want to chalk up my feelings of the book I don't want to put all of it on the book I'm like maybe maybe some of this is me some of this has to be me like in what I call the height of the brain slump did I mention what the book was yet oh my god Amber it's the everlasting rose by Danielle Clayton not only did I not remember reading the book or what the book what happened in the book I remember reading the book I don't remember what happened in the book but on this list it's just called the bell sequel because I can't remember what it was called so like I said, this is the sequel to The Bells by Danielle Clayton, which I actually, I've read 2018? Must have been. I don't know. And really enjoyed it. I really love the world that it's set in. I just love the, the, the plot and just the characters. And I had a lot of hope, high hopes going into The Everlasting Rose. And I... I'm going to have to reread it because I think I have like three pieces, three things off the top of my head that I think I can tell you that happens in this book and that's disappointing and I don't want to chalk it all up to the book like I said. I definitely know a lot of it was me because I was in a slump. But the, the thing I do want to talk about is, is this the end of the bells? because a lot of people have been calling it a duology and saying like conclusion to the bells and I'm like no I can tell you that it definitely didn't feel like a conclusion unless Danielle was just like I'm done which kind of sucks I feel like there's a lot that still needs to happen in this story either that or she should have just ended it with the first one the way the first one ended would have been open-ended enough to just be like okay like ooh, but 
then to produce a sequel and then like it just not i don't know i haven't heard anything about a third one and the people who have mentioned it or even like online i've seen it described as like the conclusion to the bells i was like that it don't make no sense let's move on so now we're getting into books that really irritated me the first one is honestly i can say it's most my it's not the worst book of the year for me but i will say it's the most disappointing read of the year for me which is why it's coming in a nice smack right sort of smack dab in the middle of this list and it's wilder girls by rory power This one's the most recent of the reads of the books that I've listed thus far. I wanted to love this book so bad. So basically the the Wilder Girls is set on this island at this boarding school that has been quarantined after this breakout of this epidemic called the Tox, which has basically transformed everything that it touches, the girls in the school included. It follows the main character Hetty and her two roommate slash best friends um, by it and the other one who I can't remember right now. All of the girls have been touched by the tox and all of them have developed these like deformities. And, like, some girls have like second spines or metal hands. I think Hetty has like her eyes like there's something she only has like one working eye the other one I think there's something like growing in it or something like that and it's the young girls I think most of the teachers were killed instantly by the tox they are cut off from the rest of civilization like I said by it goes missing and Hetty takes it upon herself to find her obviously it's her best friend um this book has often been described as like a feminist retelling of Lord of the Flies, which I haven't read. I wanted so much from this book. I had such high hopes for this book. I was so underwhelmed by this book. It was so flat. I didn't care about a single person in this book the plot just didn't do it the story didn't seem to really go anywhere for me it was very flat it started off pretty strong didn't seem to go anywhere the ending when i went into the book i'd heard people complaining about the ending and i was like it can't be that bad it was it was that bad it made me really really angry which is like the first emotion that i had reading the book so I just I didn't care I didn't care I didn't care the characters were all unlikable or just nothing that being said though Rory Power does have another book coming out in 2020 and I'm most likely going to read it one because the cover is gorgeous two because I think this was her debut novel 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 and I am really curious to see um any growth between the two books. That's always a thing I like to look for. Next. Next is my my only like real DNF of the year. There are a few books left that I started reading and haven't finished yet but I do intend to finish I think. But this one I just couldn't. I couldn't do it. That book is none other than It by Stephen King. Well, this year I learned that Stephen King books aren't for me. I've said it many a times. Some of my favorite movies are Stephen King, or, or adaptations of Stephen King books. But the movies, I mean with the books, fix it Jesus. So I picked up it, well I knew I wasn't going to read the physical copy because it's huge. I downloaded the audiobook because I intended to listen to it for the Hocus Pocus readathon back in October and first and foremost the audiobook is what like 40 hours long I got about 11 hours into the book before I just couldn't do it anymore I don't know how much I actually retained of the book except for 
all of the slurs all of the slurs i think part of me could have looked past it i would have been irritated like been like why but i could have pushed through the book if there seemed if there were was a purpose for all of the slurs but it didn't there there wasn't i also got about 11 hours into the book and I don't think there was a clown I know there was a scene with a bird that was weird but, but I don't I don't know if the clown came up that's really what I was here for I don't know what else happened but there I do remember vividly and who the um the scene that did it for me was the scene where one of the characters I don't know who put on their um I'll say for censoring purposes their inward gym voice <laughs> Jesus I couldn't I couldn't do it I couldn't do it lots of mercy I could not do it that was the end I was like I'm done I'm done here I I am done here <laughs> honestly though if I had read it like physically I might have it might not have been as bad as listening to it Let's, let's move on. And we're on the last book. Now, when this, this book didn't make number one because it was poorly written, or the plot was bad, or it was forgettable, or I, it was, it was a bad book. It was a well-written book. I was just really, really angry for the whole duration of the book and it is damsel by by alana k arnold now this is a book i've seen that you either love or hate and i hated it i have a whole rant review of me reading this book i i went into it i went into it knowing that it would be like heavy and deep because it's like it's like a take on the whole damsel in distress trope and kind of like flips it and it's about what happens after the damsel wakes up in the prince's arms and the main character Amma wakes up no memory of her life prior to being rescued by the dragon and she has no memory she has like no real like sense of herself everything she knows about herself has been told to her by prince emery everything that she has now has been given to her as prince emery she by prince emery she is to be his wife and to be his queen because he earned her. She... <sighs> this book was so aggressive is the word I want to say for it. It was, it feels like it was like shocking, not shocking, dark just to be dark, gruesome just to be gruesome. I know what the author was going for. The execution just for me wasn't it. I took almost the it took so long in the book for anything to actually happen we were like right literally at the end of the book before anything actually good happened to the main character the whole book was just like like i don't know just a series of bad things happening to her there was no sort of sense of hope or anything even the other female characters in the book there wasn't a sort of like camaraderie between them or anything it was just like competition or they were also cruel to her for no reason it just the book just wasn't my vibe it made me really really mad I was more and on top of that Ama had no personality at all I know she has no memories of herself but she also is a flat character that I didn't care about I was more invested in her cat Emery I also could go for the rest of my life without reading the words his yard. <laughs> I felt nothing but dread reading the book and it I just I didn't like it. Also I know this is a conversation right now but I personally don't need trigger warnings going into the books but I know a lot of people do and I know a lot of people definitely would benefit from trigger warnings in this particular book. I mean I mean I'm not going to go into the conversation about trigger warnings right now but like I think that I know a lot of people that need them. This book, what you doing? What you, what you doing? Why why are you like this? But yes, like this is supposed to be a feminist book but there's no sense of like 
or it's marketed as a feminist book but there's no sense of like empowerment or like I said camaraderie within the book I just it wasn't mm -mm, mm -mm, it mm -mm. <laughs> funny story though Alana K. Arnold has another book coming out I think in 2020 I think it's supposed to be like a take on literate writing hood it's called like riot hood or something and I'm thinking about reading it maybe now that I I really know I'm familiar with her writing style and like I don't know I'm curious I'm curious I'm go am I gonna regret it most possibly but there it is those are the six six of my most disappointing reads of the year six of the worst reads of the year so like not bad especially considering most of them are where I didn't hate them they're just like you know fine mediocre fine nothing like blaringly offensive you know anyway thank you for watching this video thank you for watching videos period if you like this one please give it a thumbs up let me know what your most disappointing read of the year was unless it was one of my favorites no i'm kidding if you like me feel free to subscribe all my places are down here so you can follow me and i'll follow you back and i'll see you very soon